Well, um, we had a question about do we want to take some uh, questions from our in-studio audience here? So, you up for a few of those? Yeah, sure. If All right. want to run so, a little long, we can do a few of those. Yeah, well, I, can, I can stay a little extra time here. So, if you're watching and you're in the Austin area, um, nobody's going to be at Star of India for a little bit longer. So. <laughs> sit tight. Yeah. Do we have any studio audience questions? Anybody have any questions? Anyone want to say No. Then again, maybe we won't be late to dinner. Maybe not. <laughs> so uh, there's a oh, couple. Wait, wait, wait. Oh, got we've one. Got, got one. Okay. Can you hear me? Yeah. We can. Okay. Hi. Um, hi. My question was, um, in your experience, what is the step that um, makes the difference between agnostic and atheist? Uh, so what the, what's the difference between agnostic and yeah. atheist? When, yes. What, what's, what, yeah. Which is the step that would bring you from being agnostic to atheist? Okay. Did you want to? Yeah, we get that question a lot. It's, it's really not two different things. Uh, atheism deals with what you believe and agnosticism deals with what you know or claim to know or think is knowable so for example I'm an agnostic atheist I don't think I don't think there's a there's a delineation between the two I, I don't believe there's a God and I don't know that there's a God so I'm both so for me there wasn't well I've never I've never been a believer but for me there was no step involved it's just kind of two different questions yeah. I don't know if you. Yeah, I mean, we get a we get that a lot. A lot of times, you ask someone, um, "What do you, do you believe a God exists?" And they say, "Well, I don't know." And if you say that, you've answered the wrong question. Because belief, which is theism or atheism, um, that's binary. You either do or you don't. Um, and you know, agnosticism. Um, there are people who claim to know. Um, that a God exists, or they claim to know that a God doesn't exist. So for certain definitions of, of what people call God, I might be um, Gnostic atheist. You know, um, for most definitions, I'm, I'm satisfied with saying, I don't know, but I don't believe. Okay. Thanks. All right. Any, well, any other questions? I think we have another one. Do you want to take another one, or you want to take a call? And no, I'm, I think we're done with calls. Uh, we had one guy left on the line here. It was our global warming guy. He doesn't believe in global warming, so I'm just going to direct him to the executive summary of the, um, let's see, this is, let me back up here. This is actually the um, National Climate Assessment for 2017. It was just released in the last week, and it's basically saying that um, it's pretty well established that the majority of global warming is caused by human activity. Yep. So it's kind of a done deal. So that's the science. Yeah. It, you may not believe it, but if you don't believe it, you're kind of going against science. So we have one other question in the audience. Um, yeah, I just wanted to uh, talk to uh, specifically to the last caller. Still. Uh, can you guys hear me? No, uh, you're cutting out. I put it a little closer. Uh, yeah. So the last caller, I just wanted to, to, you know, reach out and let her know that she's not alone. So I, I grew up with the same experience, um, same exact organization, the United Pest Pentecostal Church. Okay. Um, so I kind of rebelled from my uh, parents in in high school, and you know, it's taken a lot of time. I'm 30 years old now. Um, so we're still we're kind of at a place where we uh, understand that we both believe differently, uh, sort of an agree to disagree. And I think it just my advice to her is that just give it time and try to have options over a period of time with the expectation that not a lot of not a lot's going to change right away. Yeah. Um, and in particular, you you might be surprised. So I think one of the things that my my friends and I have talked a lot, particularly about religion, um, and sort of the take home is for us is you know we always want to have each other 
in our li in each other's lives, right. basically. Yep. Want these differences to kind of make it so that we hate each other and that we um, stop talking to each other. So that's something to hope for. Okay. Thanks. Okay. I'm, I'm, it, it, it always helps people to know they're not alone and that other people have kind of gone through this and it's been okay. So uh, hopefully she's still watching or will watch the video later. Yeah. Appreciate that. Hi. Hello. Hi. Hello. Can you hear me? Yes. We can. This is sort of dovetailing from the previous audience member. Um, given the cultural Christian proclivity, um, what do you, I, I'd be interested to hear what your vision is, uh, no, no pun intended there, with my, um, of, of, of going forward, of, of change, um, to embrace an atheist point of view um, with a view to obviously reducing prejudice. Um, do you have a sense of that, of, of, of what that might look like? Um, obviously building community, conversation, this experience, um, this hub. Yeah, <laughs> which um, <clears throat> I'm, I'm delighted to visit today from London. Um, cool. what, what, yeah, do you have a sense of, of that? I'd be interested in hearing. Yeah, I think, um, I guess my vision is uh, for kind of the, the near term is loosening uh, the grip that religion has on uh, politics right now and, and basically government. Um, and in particular, uh, public policy, uh, especially where it relates to women and women's health. Um, right now we've got people who, you know, their religious beliefs are informing their decisions about, you know, enacting public policy surrounding things like availability of birth control. I mean, I, I just uh, read a, um, an article recently where the University of Notre Dame has now decided that its health insurance plans will not offer birth control to students, employees, um, staff, anybody. And so um, if you, you know, I, I'm not sure what the options are if you're um, employed or you attend Notre Dame right now. But, you know, this is an example of a major university and, and they've, they've been permitted to basically dictate to women in particular what their health care options are and that there are some legal health care options that are absolutely necessary for women that they're just not going to offer. And it's because of their religion. There's no other reason for that. Um, so this is this is one of many things that um, that we have to address. And so my, my thing is that, you know, if we can limit religion's ability to do this, uh, to influence public policy like this, then that's a huge step forward. And then, of course, there's the whole science education aspect of it and history and everything else. I mean, um, I think solving some of our major problems going forward, of which global warming is a huge one. Climate change is real, it's happening, we have to fix it. Um, or at least come up with some way of addressing it. And we're not going to do that um, on our knees, begging favors of some deity uh, that doesn't exist. So uh, we need people who are well versed in science, who understand history, um, and who basically can, can get us from where we are now to the solutions we need. And I'm optimistic. I think, you know, I see American society becoming more and more secular. I think Europe's largely already there. Uh, and, you know, I think when, when you see what's happening uh, in society, we have marriage equality now. I think that would have been unthinkable, you know, even five mm -hmm. years ago. Uh, I think I think we're slowly seeing uh, secularism catch on. I think their fundamentalist religion, religionists are clinging with every ounce of their being to hold on to it, but they're, but they're losing yeah. their grip. And I think it's just going to continue. So I'm optimistic about that. I think it's going to take some time to, you know, to actually uh, see all the changes, but I see it happening. Hey guys, thanks for your patience. So you guys took 90% of my question out of my mouth. <laughs> so I'm just gonna give you like a little short bit of the end. So I was curious to ask you guys, you notice that religion, some, some, as, some negative aspects of religion are holding back advancements in technology mm -hmm. and you know, things related to how we treat people right in general. 
What do you think is missing? What things do you think we're doing well? And how can we continue to push forward in addressing some of the issues that we're facing today? Um, well, I mean, some of the things that I think um, we're doing well, I mean, the fact that we have this national climate assessment means that we do have, you know, a, a functional scientific community that's doing its very best to produce good science here in spite of all the, the obstacles in its way. So I think that's one thing that we're, we're still doing well. I don't know that we're gonna, we can sustain that if we don't make some changes and quickly. Um, and I think, I don't know, that's, um, you know, we have good information about stuff that works, like Colorado is a great experiment in what happens when you offer free birth control to young women who are basically one of the largest drivers of the, you know, unintended pregnancy thing. You know, these, these very young women who, um, some of them are teenagers, some of them are, you know, early 20s. They are not established in a career yet. They don't have a lot of money. If you give them free birth control, hey, the abortion rate plummets. And, you know, it has a direct benefit to the young women as well because now they don't have to deal with an unintended pregnancy, either having a kid that they never intended to have um, or, you know, trying to find an abortion, which is becoming increasingly unavailable. So, you know, we're doing a good job of producing good data. Um, what we're not doing right now is taking that and putting it into action as good public policy. So, mm -hmm. all right. As far as what you can do, yeah, uh, just do, do what you can to keep an eye on what the school boards are doing, uh, speak yeah. out for evidence-based uh, public policy and evidence-based uh, school curricula, um, you know, pay attention to what the, the government's doing at all levels yeah. and, just, and just use your voice. Uh, I think you know, the scientific community is largely already pretty secular because they're used to dealing with evidence-based arguments. Uh, it's just a matter of getting everyone else to kind of realize that as well. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so um, back in Belgium, um, my parents uh, were atheists, uh, but my grandparents were Catholic. I'm getting back on the question about yeah, how to talk about that in the family, like what the last caller was at. And actually, they had a bigger difference on the political issue than the religious one. Yeah. So um, they, they would kind of have a disagreement, like to not talk about it at Christmas dinner, for example, like to keep the peace in the family. Mm -hmm. uh, and I'm thinking like myself, I like to engage in these debates, but I think it must be very difficult to like have it every single day. So I wonder like maybe within a, family, like I bet here in America, there's maybe some splits in the families also on not only religious, but also on political grounds that like, maybe not say like we never talk about it, but like have defined moments like then we talk about it and those moments, they are safe. Like everybody can just feel safe and enjoy each other's company, like to keep the peace and yeah, keep on liking each other and not start to <laughs> like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's kind of an argument for um, one of the traditions of the Festivus um, festival, the airing of grievances. Right. You know, so you could have the airing of grievances and you know for Festivus, and then it's over. Yeah. Yeah. And at some point, it started to decline. So my mom would threaten my grandfather with not showing up on his funeral, <laughs> and it was immediately back. Like. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, for, for families that are willing to agree to that, it's a good idea. Yeah. You, you, you have your time and your place, and then you don't let that, those arguments just get into every single family gathering. So, so yeah. Hi, um, also from London. Um, if you don't mind me asking, I just wanted to ask, um, do you get a sense that the conversations that you've had um, on the atheist experience has changed over the 20 years. I know you had a, an anniversary recently, mm -hmm. but you, do you find that some conversations ha have dissipated, some maybe more extreme, uh, or that the cut and thrust of the conversations go in a certain direction, maybe relating to like, you know, how it informs public policy in the States, or, or that you get, you're getting more, maybe more Muslim people ringing up and saying, saying their experience that you didn't you previously have? That's a good question. I mean, we, we, 
I have I've only been actually appearing on the show for a few years, but I was watching the atheist experience pretty much from the beginning. Uh, you know, the character of the calls have changed mainly because we used to be a local show, and so as people flip in the channels, and I think the arguments are a lot more sophisticated now for the most part. I mean, we get our yeah. trolls, but uh, the people who are actually serious callers uh, tend to tend to come in with at least a more complex argument, if nothing else. Um, other than that, we, you know, we, we have fewer religious callers in general because now we're internet only. People kind of have to be looking for us and specifically to see the show. And so we, we try to get people to kind of tell your theist friends to, to call in and, and uh, try to balance it that way. But th those are the, the main differences that I see over the years. Yeah. Yeah, I would agree with that. I mean, I've been on the show for, um, let's see, nine and a half years now. Um, and uh, I mean, I can remember back when I first started, we were local only. Um, and so when we were live, it was local people and it was mostly theists who were calling us. So, and I remember the very first show I did was one on um, circumcision. Mm -hmm. And um, one of the callers was a Jewish guy who was very irate that we were basically, you know, um, uh, attacking one of the central tenets of his faith. And, you know, so um, we largely don't get calls like that very much anymore. But that was interesting. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Remember, he, it's like, but it's not like it's harmful. <laughs> <laughs> I can relate because I have a Jewish background. Yeah. And uh, I remember, I, I just constantly think I never had a say in the matter. Yeah. You know, and yeah. if I had a choice, I would go, no. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that might be it. All right. Okay. All right, we're good. All right. Thanks, that Thanks. was fun. Yep.